The United States President Donald Trump has cancelled Singapore summit with North Korean leader Kim Jong-un that was scheduled for June 12th. Trump has accused North Korea of tremendous anger and open hostility. Trump also said that he's waiting for Kim to engage in constructive dialogue and actions. But until then, U.S. sanctions against North Korea will continue. Russian President Vladimir Putin has said that Moscow regrets the cancellation of the summit between the United States and North Korea. Speaking after talks with French President Emmanuel Macron in St. Petersburg, Putin said he hoped the summit would take place. Nonetheless, Macron too said that the process must continue in order to bring peace security to the whole region. The scrapping of the most anticipated meet between Trump and Kim has caught South Korea by surprise. It prompted South Korean President Moon Jae-in to call a midnight emergency meeting to discuss the issue. South Korean government spokesperson said, and I quote, we are attempting to make sense of what precisely President Trump means. South Korea has welcomed the destruction of North Korea's nuclear test site. South Korea's foreign ministry spokesman said, and I quote, the dismantling of the nuclear site was the first meaningful step to realize complete denuclearization, which North Korea expressed through, including the inter-Korean summit. UN Secretary General Antonio Guterres has unveiled a global disarmament strategy. Just as U.S. President Trump cancelled the summit with North Korea's leader, Guterres told an audience at the University of Geneva that uh, nuclear powers must do more to promote disarmament, putting a particular onus on Russia and Syria since right after the Cold War. Dutch prosecutors have identified a Russian military unit as the source of the missile that shot down Malaysia Airlines Flight 17 over eastern Ukraine in 2014. 296 passengers on board were killed in the tragedy. A joint investigation team drawn from Australia, Belgium, Malaysia, the Netherlands and Ukraine is gathering evidence for a criminal prosecution in the downing of the plane. Russia has reacted to the allegations that it was involved in the downing of MH17. Russia has called the charges baseless and says it is ready to cooperate with investigations. Russia's news agency quoted the defense ministry as saying in a statement, and I quote, not a single air defense missile launcher of the Russian armed forces has ever crossed the Russian-Ukrainian border. Prime Minister of Netherlands Mark Rutte has cut short his two-day India visit after Dutch investigations uncovered evidence that it was a Russian missile that brought down the Malaysian airliner MH17 over Ukraine four years ago. In a statement, his office said Prime Minister Rutte wants to chair a meeting of his Council of Ministers to discuss the development. India and the Netherlands have condemned international terrorism and deplored violence by Pakistan-based terror groups. Both sides also signed 51 agreements covering government and private sectors. Dutch PM Mark Rutte said that India and EU need to work together to prevent and combat terrorism, radicalization and extremism which threatens Europe as much as India. Tehran has raised the stakes in its battle with the U.S. over a nuclear deal. Supreme Leader Ayatollah Ali Khamenei says that Europe must guarantee that Iran's oil will be completely sold if it wants to save the deal. After the U.S. withdrew from the deal, the EU, China and Russia are trying to salvage the deal and their diplomats are expected to meet with Iranian counterparts for talks in Vienna on Friday. Russian uh, President Vladimir Putin have appreciated efforts by Europe to save the Iran nuclear deal despite the United States withdrawal from it. Putin made the remarks during a meet with Macron who has proposed broadening talks with Tehran to cover Iran's ballistics program and its role in the Middle East.
Bollywood actress and UNICEF goodwill ambassador Priyanka Chopra has called on for the international community to step up support for Rohingya women and children who fled to Bangladesh from a military crackdown in Myanmar. The actress urged the international community to tackle the issue of Rohingya children living without basic rights to food, clean water, shelter, proper sanitation and education. Irish Prime Minister Leo Baratkar has called on the country to vote yes to liberalisation of the world's strict, strictest abortion laws. This comes a day before the historic referendum in the country. Voters will be asked today whether to repeal the Eighth Amendment to the country's constitution which bans abortion under nearly all circumstances. China has criticized the United States for withdrawing its invitation for the country to take part in a multinational naval exercise. The United States has disinvited China from participating in its annual maritime exercises in the Pacific because of what was caused China's continued militarization on the South China Sea only serves to raise tensions and destabilize the region. China has reportedly increased the size of a currency swap agreement with Pakistan by US $1.57 billion with cash earmarked for boosting fast depleting foreign currency reserves. Two State Bank of Pakistan sources have said that the currency swap agreement between SBP and China's central bank has been hiked to 20 billion yuan from 10 billion yuan. Lebanese Saad Hariri has won a new term as Prime Minister after securing support from the vast majority of lawmakers in the country's new parliament. Hariri received backing from 111 politicians in the 128-seat parliament, up from 80 in his previous election. All major parliamentary blogs supported him except for Hezbollah, which is the Shiite Muslim group, supported by Iran. China has appreciated Burkina Faso's decision to cut diplomatic ties with Taiwan. The government of Burkina Faso had earlier announced its decision to severe its diplomatic relationship with Taiwan. Spokesman Liu Kang said that the government of the People's Republic of China is the sole legitimate government that represents China. U.S. President Donald Trump has issued a posthumous pardon to boxer Jack Johnson. Jack was the first African-American heavyweight champion who was jailed a century ago due to his relationship with a white woman. In signing the pardon, the president cited tremendous racial tension during the time Johnson was champion. U.S. President Donald Trump has signed a bill that would ease rules on most banks for the first time since the 2007 to 2009 financial crisis. The legislation eases regulations on all but a handful of the nation's largest banks and marks a significant victory in Trump's efforts to cut rules in a bid to spur economic growth. Brazilian truck driver strike has stretched into another day. Truckers are protesting against rising fuel prices. Protesters complain that the cost of di diesel fuel, which represents about 42% of the cost, is up 16% from a year ago. They have been blocking highways and urban traffic across the country, disrupting transportation in a nation that relies heavily on road transportation. 
One student has been killed and several injured in clashes that broke out between university students and professors and police in Bolivian city El Alto. Students and professors are calling for an increased budget. The violence began when protesters gathered at a main access point to the city and the local airport. Police shot tear gas in an effort to move them. The former treasurer of Spain's ruling People's Party, Luis Barcinas, has been given a 33-year prison sentence and fined 44 million euros. Barcinas has been sentenced for his part in a corruption case in which dozens of high-ranking party members were jailed. 29 of the 37 accused were convicted and they were sentenced to a combined 351 years behind bars. Two Kosovo doctors have been convicted for a second time for involvement in an organ trafficking ring that performed illegal kidney transplant at a clinic near the capital Pristina. The director of the Medicus Clinic, urologist Lufti Dervishi, had his sentence reduced by six months to seven and a half years. Anesthetist Sokol Hajdini had his sentence cut to one year from three. Thousands of Nicaraguans are back to the streets of Managua after talks between the President Daniel Ortega, government and opposition and civil society groups collapsed amidst a standoff. According to reports, dialogue was suspended amidst demands that early elections be held and that changes in electoral laws be made to strengthen the democracy. At least two men and a woman have lost their lives after an old cinema collapsed in Tutucam, Argentina. The collapsed building was around 90 years old. Video uploaded on the internet shows bystanders and emergency services removing the rubble. There are reports that a few other people have also been injured. A local parish priest has accused the Chilean church officials of complicity in covering up sexual abuse crimes in an ever-widening scandal. The acquisitions come one day after Catholic Church authorities in the Chilean city of Ranakua suspended 14 priests while they are investigated for improper conduct. Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi will host his Bangladeshi counterpart Sheikh Hasina at Shanti Niketan in West Bengal today. Modi and Hasina are likely to hold bilateral talks and jointly inaugurate the Bangladesh Bhavan within the Vishwa Bharati University campus that has been funded by the Hasina government. Chief Minister of India's Southern State Karnataka, H.T. Kumaraswamy, will face a flow test today, which he is widely expected to sail through. Karnataka has been witnessing political uncertainty for past 10 days. BJP's B.S. Yudhurappa, who was sworn in as the Chief Minister, had stepped down two days later in the face of imminent defeat without going through a flow test. In a fresh source of embarrassment for Pakistan, 20-year-old Lakshay Taiba terrorist Zebullah alias Hamza has told India's National Investigation Agency that Pakistan is not just sending terror agents into the country but also smuggling arms. Zebullah's disclosure is significant as security forces admit that no terrorist has been caught without a weapon in an encounter. Seventeen people were uh, missing and hundreds of others forced from their homes as Cyclone Mekono hit Yemen's island of Socotra. This has prompted the government uh, to declare a state of emergency in the island. Mekono brought thunderstorms and strong winds off up to the island, causing severe flooding and damage to houses. According to India's meteorological department, the cyclone is expected to intensify. Over 100 jellyfishes under China's top level state protection have been found in a pond of museum in southwest China's Yunnan province. 
Last week, these jellyfishes were uh, believed uh, to have uh, existed for at least 600 million years and usually live in clear rivers and lakes. It is rare to find so many of them in a small pond. A Labrador named Fred has adopted nine ducklings after their mother disappeared near Britain Stansted Airport. Yellow ducklings were uh, waddling around alone without their mother at uh, Mount Fitch Castle in Essex uh, when a 10-year-old Fred immediately took to the baby ducks and has been watching them ever since. Their visit to Sunrisers Hyderabad will hope to make the most of their second opportunity to make the final of the 2018 Indian Premier League when they face the Kolkata Knight Riders in the second qualifier at the Eden Gardens. Kane Williamson's uh, Hyderabad were beaten by Chennai Super Kings in the first qualifier on Tuesday, meaning now they have a second chance to make the final. Meanwhile, Dinesh Karthik led uh, Kolkata East past Rajasthan Royals on Wednesday. Eliminator defeating the 2008 winners by 26 runs. To tennis now, the draw for the 2018 French Open was declared on Thursday night with defending champion Rafael Nadal pitted against Ukraine's Alexander Dolgopolov in the opening round. Nadal remembering his eyeing a record extending 11 to Ronald Garros title and it's placed well clear of his main challengers who are placed in the other half. Second seed Alexander Zavre finds himself in the top half of the draw and faces a potential clashes against former champion Stanislas Warinka and the seventh seed Dominique Thiem before the semi-final. In the women's single section, arch-rival Serena Williams and Maria Sharapova are set to meet in the fourth round. Both former champions are placed in the same quarter of the draw. Serena, winner in the 2002, 2013 and 2015, begins her campaign against Kustina Pliskova, while Sharapova, who was seeded 26, faces a qualifier. Defending champion Jelena Ostapenko could potentially face Serena's sister, Venus Williams, in the fourth round. The Latvian faces Ukraine's Katrina Kozlova in the opening round. Barcelona legend Andre Enista has signed for Japanese club Vissel Kobe after ending a 22-year stint with the Catalan Giants. Iniesta, who first travels to Russia for the next month's FIFA World Cup with 2010 champion Spain, revealed his future course of action through a post on Twitter which showed him with the owner of Japanese e-commerce site Rakuten, who are also short sponsors of Barca. The 32-year-old spent 22 years at Camp Nou, winning 32 major titles, including nine La Liga titles and four Champions Leagues. And staying with football, Italian Serie A runners Arp Napoli have roped in former Real Madrid and Bayern Munich boss Carlo Ancelotti as their new manager in a three-year deal. The appointment comes a day after departure of Maurizio Sarri, who has been heavily linked with another of Ancelotti's former clubs, Chelsea, including a trophy made in stint with the AC Milan. Ancelotti has enjoyed a largely successful career winning trophies at top clubs in England, France, Germany and Spain. Warner Brothers Studio is developing George R.R. R. Martin's fantasy novel The Ice Dragon as an animated movie with the Game of Thrones writer on board as a producer first published in 1980. The Ice Dragon is the story of a young girl and an ice dragon. She befriends in a mythical land after the death of her mother. Weep and Seinfeld star Julia Louis Dreyfus will be awarded the Mark Twain Prize for American Humor. The Kennedy Center for Performing Arts announced on Wednesday. Dreyfus has won six consecutive Emmys for Best Actress 
in a comedy series for her role in the Emmy winning political satire Weep and is currently recuperating from breast cancer treatment. Marvel Studios executive producer Kevin Feige told the BBC in an interview that a film based on Pakistani American superhero Miss Marvel is in the two works. He said Miss Marvel is definitely sort of in the works. We have plans for that once we are introduced Captain Marvel to the world. Harvey Weinstein attorney Benjamin Brafman said in a court filing that federal prosecutors in New York have launched a criminal investigation into the film producer. In addition to a previously disclosed probe by the Manhattan district attorney, actor Morgan Freeman has been accused of sexual misconduct by eight women, 16 people, eight witnesses, and eight who claimed to be victims, spoke to CNN about the Academy Award-winning actor's alleged behavior, describing multiple such incidents throughout the actor's career.